worship this morning.
say, for your, for your goodness and your mercy, and your mercy toward, us, toward us, we offer, we offer, we offer praise. Amen. God has been good to somebody in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, I don't even have to think 15 years back. I can think about what he did yesterday. Yeah. And I can tell of his goodness and his mercy.
are continuing our preaching series, urging each of us to live the cheerful life. All right. You heard our youth read the one of the scriptures that will form the background of today's message. It finds itself rooted in a familiar story that deals with the people of God being delivered out of that terrible place, Egypt. So I want to use as a title for the message, <clears throat> Be Cheerful After the Evacuation. All right. All right. Be Cheerful After the Evacuation. On Sunday, October 27th, we had to evacuate our building because of a gas leak. But we returned some minutes after the evacuation and worshiped, asking God to bless our interruptions. A few days later, Thursday, October 31st, some called it Halloween. The Perez Elementary School suffered the most serious effects of the torrential rainstorms and floods out of 128 Austin Independent School District schools. And as a result of that, the classes were canceled, students and faculty were evacuated. That same day, of course, based on the same uh, event, more than 1,100 Onion Creek residents were evacuated amid the overnight storm, a raging river, the roaring waters of Onion Creek. And in the midst of that, there were many calls for help. The next day, November 1st, in Los Angeles at the LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, there were many who were evacuated because of a shooting incident. Two days later, in my hometown of Birmingham at the Shuttlesworth Airport, there was a two-hour evacuation because of a bombing threat. Last Friday, a typhoon in the Philippines yeah. caused thousands of people to be evacuated. Evacuations are more common than you might believe. Fires and floods cause evacuations frequently across the United States and seemingly every year people along the coastlines of the United States are forced to leave their homes and their communities because of storms and hurricanes. Hundreds of times a year there are all sorts of threats, transportation, industrial accidents like the one up the road in West Texas that causes people to be evacuated from their homes. These were evacuations, removals, sometimes forcibly, of persons from endangered areas. What about you? Have you ever been evacuated? 
lean to the person next to you, ask them the question. Ask them, have you ever? I don't hear you. Have you ever been evacuated? I'm wondering this morning, has God had to evacuate you? Has, has God had to evacuate you from a dangerous, desperate, distressful, deceptive, discouraging, oppressive, abusive situation or person? Has God had to snatch you out of a context and a moment when it was a dangerous place for you to be? Has God had to evacuate you from a relationship or a job that you did not want to leave? Somehow he had to swoop down and make you leave. I'm wondering, I'm, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if God has had to evacuate you from a complacent, negligent, perhaps even reckless attitude you have about him. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if God feels today like you are taking him for granted. I'm wondering as he sits in glory, is he asking you the question? Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces, but don't have much, but I got something. Here's what I bring. Do, is God asking you whether or not he needs to evacuate you? Because you're in a place with a person dealing with something in your life that has you stuck to it almost like a fly stuck to some paper, glued down. You can't get away. It's so good to you that it and you just won't let go I'm asking the question have you ever been evacuated has God sent a warning to you saying you are in a place of danger or has he had to come to you and forcibly take you out of that experience. I've discovered that sometimes God has to force us to leave some places and some people in order for him to get the glory and us to gain the victory. I'm talking to some people stuck somewhere today talking to some people in some places, doing some things that you don't want anybody to know about on Sunday morning. Yeah, about talking about the sneaking around and the sleeping around and the sinning around. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about those who are stuck in a place and it is so good to you that God's going to have to come along and snatch you up out of it and you see God has to forcibly evacuate these us from these places and evacuate us from our attitudes and certain behaviors that we have because oftentimes we don't even recognize or fear the danger so he has to lift us up and this morning in this text, we have a situation in which God had to evacuate his people because his people were hurting. They were being mistreated. They were in an oppressive, abusive 
situation while they were enslaved in Egypt. Yet, 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 while they were still in captivity, God's people worshipped. While they were still enslaved, they still worshipped. They, they worshipped, the Bible says, because they were encouraged by knowing that God was concerned about them and had heard their misery. That ought to be enough for us to come to church to worship God, not asking what we can get, but just because we know he's concerned and he's heard our feeble cry. Yes, they were in captivity in a bad situation, but they still found something deep down within them that allowed them to come forward with a praise on their lips. Yes, and, and this is what I call, I call this interim praise and worship. This, this is that, that worship that's between when you realize God cares and when God delivers. You got to know how to pray in between. You, you got to know how to pray in the meantime because when God is already working it out, there is soon and very soon when he'll show up. That in between praise and worship is, is when deliverance is in the works. I, I, I don't know yet when it will happen, but, but I got the understanding that God has heard my feeble cry because he is God. I know he will show up. And so in between, while I'm waiting on him to deliver me from my captivity, while I'm waiting for him to take me out of my place, I'm going to praise him anyhow. That in between, praise. And if you know the story, you will remember that God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh, you let my people go. And when Pharaoh refused, the Bible says that then the Lord said to Moses, Now, Moses, you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty hand, he will let them go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out from the country. But, 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 here they are hearing that message but the writer of Exodus says, but they did not listen because their discouragement, quote, because their discouragement and their bondage so overwhelmed them that they could not believe that God would bring them out. See, that's a place you and I can find ourselves that we can be so overwhelmed as, or as one person I heard say, overwhelmed <laughs> by the pressure and the oppression and the cruelty and the devastation that it makes you not even want to believe that the one who made the winds and the waves can really tell them to be still. And because, it says, because of their discouragement and because they were under bondage, they did not listen. After 10 plagues, 10 plagues, God forced the abusive, oppressive leader of Egypt, Pharaoh, to let his people go. And Pharaoh and the Egyptians wanted them to get out of there so badly that, that the Bible says that they said, Pharaoh said to them, get up. <laughs> get out of here, take your stuff, take your flock. But then he says, but bless me. Hypocrite. I've got you enslaved. I'm the oppressor, I'm the abuser, I'm the one that's messed you up, 
and, and I had to be forced to let you go. Now, as I let you go on your way out, bless me. At least he believed they had a blessing to give. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's what will happen when you have to evacuate. You see, the old saying is sometimes you don't miss your uh, water till, till you're well. See, see, sometimes we treat folk a certain way because we think we have them captive. They can't go anywhere else. Nobody else wants them. But when you start seeing that God has made a way out of no way, that God has opened a door that was closed, that God gave them a view of what can be and what could be and what might be, when they start taking that step toward their door, then you want to get sweet, nice, and fine. Bless me. I'm the one whose hand oppressed you bless me bless me bless me and they did leave Egypt of course they left Egypt and I found some interesting words in that 13th chapter it says when they left Egypt they were quote armed for battle meaning they wore the right stuff they were armed in appearance externally ready, but not armed internally. All right. They were dressed up on the outside, but was dressed down on the inside. They, they were dressed down and had no fight in them, just, just like Sunday morning attendance. Wake up on Sunday morning, Put on all your fine stuff, looking good on the outside, trying to fool folk by the way you look, but you're dressed down on the inside. Somebody looks at you, they think you're armed for battle, that you can handle everything, but then on the inside, you are almost afraid for somebody to say hello. Armed for battle, externally but open and vulnerable on the inside. But yet the Lord comes to you and me as he came to them. The Bible says, the Lord said, in this captivity, he says, I have seen the misery of my people. I have heard their cry because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. He's concerned about you today. You may not want your past, pastor, your family, your friends to know what you're dealing with. You may not want them to know what's got you pressed down and oppressed. You might be in an abusive situation. You don't want anybody to know because they wouldn't believe that you would be in that kind of situation. But the Lord knows. He says, I've seen the misery you've got. I've heard your cry. And I'm concerned about you. You see, God was concerned about them because he loved them and he remembered his agreement with them. He's a God of agreements. Yes, he is. And when God makes an agreement, he'll remember the agreement that he made. He made it a long time ago with the fathers of the children of Israel. And he continually tells Pharaoh, tells Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. But he adds a caveat so that they can worship me let them go so that they can worship me and so that they can quote offer sacrifices for me in the desert is that why you're here is that why you want to be free is that why you want to be removed evacuated from your situation your context your relationship so that you can worship or do you just want to get out so you can gain for yourself he, he says, let them go. Tell them, let them go. So that several times in the book of Exodus, let them go so that they can worship me, so that they can have a festival for me, so that they can offer sacrifices to me. Let them go. You see, this whole evacuation plan 
was so that they could worship God. So when God snatches you up out of a situation, sometimes forcibly, there is the expectation that you will come before the king. There's an expectation that you will not find the first door you can exit from him. But that you'll come before the king. And you will bring your offering. You, you, you might be broken and torn in pieces. You may not be able to get up there. It might be a challenge just to take a step. But go before the king. Because he's evacuated you from a situation. And here he is now taking them out. He, he took them out. He took them out. And then they say to Moses, when they see the Egyptians coming after them, they say to Moses, but, but Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you took us here to die in the wilderness? Why, why, why you bring us out here? What, what, what have you done, Moses, about by bringing us out here? We, 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 we know we've been slaves. We know we've been oppressed. We know we've been under the weight. But now, uh, why did you bring us out here? He says, and then, isn't this what we told you in Egypt, Moses? Always comes back to the leader. Leader's trying to help him. But leaders have to be careful because sometimes it'll flip on the leader. When, when things don't quite go the way you want them to go, then the leader, well, 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 why, 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 why did you do what I asked you to do? Don't, you the leader, don't you, don't you supposed to tell me not to let me do it? <laughs> Moses, why, why, why didn't you leave us alone? That's what it says. Why didn't you leave us to continue serving the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to keep slaving for the Egyptians than to die in the desert. The fickleness of God's people. And some of the ancestors are still around. That's right. Let me die in captivity. That's what we say. Let me die in captivity. Leave me alone. Let me remain a slave. It would have been better if I just stayed in this messed up situation. I, I know I got some hurts. I know I got some bad habits. I know I got some hangers. But leave me alone. I want to keep them. And their complaints suggest they didn't know how bad their situation in Egypt was. They did not grasp or recognize that God was snatching them up, evacuating them, trying to get them somewhere. They needed celebrate recovery. Miss right. right. yeah. P, can we sign them up? Can we go back in time and sign them up for celebrate recovery? They, they got some problems. They got some Issues and here's the fundamental question today: Do you trust him? That's right. That's the question. Do you trust him while you're going through before he delivers you? Do you trust him while you are under it? Do, or do you trust him <clears throat> after the evacuations? Do you trust him that 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 he will deliver you from your place, from your person? Do you trust him? Here's why you ought to trust him. You ought to trust him because God evacuates us to rescue us. That's what was happening in the text. He, 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 he wants to pull you out to rescue you. That's what he said here in the text. He says, I have come down to rescue them and then to take them into a good land of milk and honey. He's trying to get you going somewhere when he's taking you out of a bad Situation when he's trying to evacuate you, he's trying to take you into your place of promise. And some of us just don't want to go, and God has to just force us and snatch us and push us and, and kidnap us in order to get us up out of our situation. 
He said to them, I will bring you up out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. In other words, you, you may not even realize it, but they've got this handlebar around your neck that makes you flip and turn everywhere you want to go. It's got your neck in a strap. It's got you bowed down. And I know you've been living under that oppression and that bad situation so long that what is abnormal you think is normal, that what is oppressive you think is all right. I, I know you have come to understand and you now think your situation is all right, but God is saying it's time for evacuation because I got to rescue you. That, that's what he had to do in this text. And, and, and notice now when Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers rushed into the sea, the Lord brought the water. This is scripture I'm quoting. Brought the water crashing down on them, on the Egyptian. But the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, not, not moist ground, not, not where there was real, a remnant of the water that had been there, but God cleaned that thing up so much that he wouldn't let them walk in a muddy situation. He dried it up, made it so dry that it was firm when they walked. When God snatches you up, it's going to be all right. He, he's going to give you some solid ground to, to stand. He heard my feeble cry. He, he's going to give you some solid ground, and he saved them from the Egyptians. He was on a rescue mission. God's on a rescue mission for somebody in the house today. It reminds me of one of my favorite stories, the unit about these brothers who are part of the uh, a special uh, commando team pattern after Delta Force. These brothers snoop in, swoop into places, and they snatch up people who are under captivity. You all know him, uh, that, that handsome brother, that tall, dark, and handsome brother, Dennis uh, Haysbert. You, you know, he, he might remind you of somebody. You, you know... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that brother, he, he, he's that tall, uh, dark, and uh, handsome man. He, he's got an issue, though. He's got some hair, but, but that's all right. He, 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 he's, he's part of the unit, and he snatches folk out trying to rescue them. Earlier this year, four girls were enslaved yes, in Cleveland, Ohio, but they were evacuated they were rescued and, and and they did not know moments before they were helped that things would change for them he may not come when you want him but he's always on time he he may not show up on your calendar but just hold on he's got a calendar because he's trying to rescue you. Not only is he trying to rescue you, he's trying to release you. He's trying to free you up. He's, he's trying to give you some wings to spread. In fact, that's what he said to them. He said, therefore, I am the Lord and I will free you from, the, from Egypt. Then he says, the Lord will fight for you. All you got to do is be still. His name, his name, his name. He, he, he will fight for you. And then that wonderful song that the praise team led us in singing talks about the strength. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my song. He's my salvation, and so I'll praise him. He's my strength like no other. He's my hope like no other. He's my peace like no other. He's my joy like no other. Nobody can do it like him. He's trying to release us and free us. I went to see 12 years a slave by myself because my wife believes she'll be angry. And she would be. 
So if you plan to go, if you have, it will make you angry. A movie based on a true story that reveals the brutality, the cruelty, the devastation, the oppression of slavery in America through the lens or the narrative of Solomon Northup, a free black man who lived in Saratosa, New York, that was somehow abducted, sold into slavery in 1841. But then in 1853, Solomon was evacuated by a man whose name was Mr. Parker. <laughs> Mr. Cephas Parker. True story. From a cotton plantation near the Red River in Louisiana. And as I sat there, when I go to things, I, I, I take a little book with me. And I'm taking notes in the dark. I, I, I don't know where it's going, but I'm just writing. And there were two statements that I heard that I wrote down. One was a, a brother who was a fighting slave. He said, slaves have no stomach for a fight. Those of us who have a slave mentality. We are in bondage and we don't think we can come out of a place, a habit, a situation, an attitude, a behavior. We just say, that's just how I am. And, and, and we act as if we can't do it. You're right if you've got a slave mentality. Slaves have no stomach for a fight. Then there was another statement I wrote down that said, um, I don't want to survive. I just want to live. John 10.10 10 came to my mind. I have come, Jesus said, that you may have life and that more abundantly. You see, when you are in a bad situation, when you are in an oppressive situation, when you are in a situation you don't like that's not good for you, you've got to be willing to do more than just survive. You've got to be willing to live. This man, Solomon, was in captivity for 12 years. The Israelites were in captivity for 430 years. Now in our text, God is releasing them, freeing them up. How long have you been in captivity? How, how long have you been held captive with that messed up attitude you've got? That messed up behavior you've got, that strange outlook on life, that strange view you have. How long are you going to be in the grips of your grief? How long are you going to stay where you are because of that hurt or that habit or that hang up? Don't you need to be evacuated? Yeah. Are, are you longing to get out of something but, but you are afraid? God says, be still and go with me now when I let you out. God He's trying to rescue us. God is trying to release us and God is trying to redeem us. Therefore, I am the Lord and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. He, he says, and, and, and because I love you so much, you've been redeemed and I'm going to guide you to my sacred home. And then he says, you will bring them in, plant them on your mountain, the place that you have designated to be your sanctuary. God is trying to get you somewhere when he's trying to move you out of that place. And by redeeming them, he's saying, I promise that I will deliver you with all of my power and all of my might. I'm not just going to talk. I will do. 
And here we come to the text. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. After the evacuation, Moses and the Israelites wrote and sang a song, the most ancient song we know of. The first song recorded, the most ancient song we know of about who God is, what God has done in the recent past, what is God's character, and what are his promises. Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. But then somebody said, why don't we start a women's chorus? It says that they sung the song in Exodus 15, and then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, the Bible says, decided that she would take her tambourine and that she would start dancing and it says the other women started joining her and they started singing this song too. You see, brothers, you can't leave the women too far behind. They're going to get their praise on. And nobody had to encourage them to get their praise on. They just start praising the Lord. Then they just start praising the Lord because what the Lord had done for them. They had been delivered. They had moved from crying to cheering to celebrating. And why should they celebrate? Can I say what I like to say? Because of what the Lord done done for. And when you think about it, I'm about through. When you think about it, what has the Lord done for you? I can just see my mind rolling back and some of those brothers and sisters who were in the male chorus, who were in the uh, women's chorus, who were in the mass chorus, if they were transported through Star Trek into the 20th and the 21st century, I, I somehow believe that those who had been in captivity in Israel, if they had been ev evacuated and come into our century, I believe they just might join the L.A. Mass Choir. Yeah. There's somebody, there's somebody, there's somebody I know uh, in that crowd who would be in the L.A. Mass Choir. Can, can't you hear them singing, my life was torn beyond repair? I felt so alone. Uh, I seemed as if no one cared but God. You came along. You gave me a song to ease the pain and erase the strain but God. You could have left me standing there with no one and no one to care, but you promised me that you'd be there on time and you did just what you said. That, that, that's the kind of God we've got. He, he's that kind of God. He, when he says, I'll rescue you, he'll do it. He says, I'll redeem you, he'll do it. He says, I'll release you, he'll do it. And it says, you could have left me standing there, but against all odds, I made the choice to give you my life. I just now just got to rejoice. You answered my prayers, not a moment too soon. Your word I embraced, my sins you erased. You know what? That's when... You blessed me. When I looked around and thought it was all over, when I was so down I couldn't get up, that's when you blessed me. When I looked around and didn't see my way out and somehow I couldn't find any open doors, but that's when you blessed me. When it looks like I couldn't go nowhere and couldn't move anywhere, that's when you blessed me. When it looked so bad and I was being whipped up on, that's when you blessed me. When I couldn't find my way anywhere, that's when you blessed me. When I found my back against the wall, that's when you blessed me. That's right there, right there, right there. Right there, right there, right there. That's when you bless me. That's when you bless me. That's when you bless me. I'm going to sing my song. That's when you bless me. And he did. To 
does what he said he'd do. He did just what he said he'd do. He did just what he said he'd do. y'all help them now in my spirit I can tell that somebody wants to sing with y'all today not me we got any choir members out there I'm just talking about the ones who can sing just yes, yes. got any choir members out there We got some choir members. Anybody want to be a choir member? Come on up. This is your time. Anybody want to be a choir member? Come on up. Alto, soprano. Now, I will walk out there. I will grab you. Don't y'all know when he'll bless you? Right when you're going through. He'll bless you right when you're going through. Right when you're going through. He'll bless you. See, this is how it's gonna be in heaven. They just gonna walk up. This is how it's gonna be in glory. They just gonna walk up. All the Lord's gotta say, why the singers in the house? Just walk up. Just come up and don't 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 matter how you look, just come up. Because he wants to bless somebody today. Just come on up and be a part of the just come on up here. He'll be a part. Just come on up. That's when he blessed me. <laughs> God wants somebody to respond to him today. Because you got to be cheerful after the evacuation. <laughs> Let's come on up. Thank you, Reverend Carey. Let's come on up. Let's come on up. Just come if God is speaking to you. <laughs> 